Hi guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I harvest my meat birds. It's going to be kind of graphic, so if you don't want to see it, I'm going to warn you right now. Shut off the video. Don't watch it. It's going to be graphic, so I don't want to have any comments about, oh, it's unhumane and all this stuff. If you don't want to process your own birds, I understand. That's fine. It's not the funnest thing to do in the world, but I respect my animals. I want to eat good quality food, raised the way God intended the food to be raised. So. That's why we do our food. That's why we grow our own chickens, so we can have good quality food grown the way the Creator meant our food to be raised. So, shut off the video now if you don't want to watch. I wanted to give you guys a quick little tour of my chicken processing area. Over here we got my cone set up. I just have it set up on a wheel that I can spin on top of a fence post. Standing on a base, so it's just a tire rim on the bottom, welded to a fence post. Another tire rim up top with three homemade cones. That's the first station. Then up there, dirty. I got a bucket of soapy water. I can rinse them in. And then over here, I got my chicken fryer filled with hot water. You want the water to be around 145 to 150 degrees. Dunk the birds a few times. Three seconds a piece, shaking them vigorously. Pull the feathers out. If the big feathers come out easy, then you know you're good to go. And then I just built a little A-frame setup over here. Some eye hooks, some rope that I just tie around the chicken's leg. And this is where I pull the feathers off. And then I go ahead and I just throw them in the bucket. And I just have a table set up. Some really nice sharp razor knives. Rags. Soap. I have my hose. I keep a thermometer so I can keep an eye on my water temperature. A couple of buckets. Soapy water bucket to wash my hands with. Keep them clean all the time. Another bucket to put all the entrail and parts inside of afterwards. Then I just have my cooler, it's empty right now at this point, filled with cold water and ice. I keep apple cider vinegar in the water, just as like an antibacterial, antiviral measure. Probably not needed, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I keep my birds on there to chill. And then once I'm all, then once I'm all done, I will bag them up with my heat shrink bags, and I will show you guys the process of those bags. Oh, one of the most important parts I almost forgot to tell you guys. I'm going to put it down right here. A pack of gum. You know, harvesting the birds, one of the worst parts is the smell. I always try to keep gum with me. Then that way I can have a nice fresh piece of mint in my mouth while I'm, doing, taking, while I'm harvesting the birds. And the smell doesn't bother you as much. We're just going to pull the head out right behind the ears here, the crowded artery. So I don't take this lightly here, that's not my favorite part of, of having the chickens is harvesting them. It's not fun. Taking an animal's life is not the best thing, but we try to make sure here everything goes to use. I got wood chips in the bottom of my bucket here to collect the blood of the animal. I know it's going to go in the compost pile, which makes it very good for the compost. Next is the scolding station. We want to make sure the water is between 145 and 150. <clears throat> right now it's 152, so that's perfect. We've just been keeping the turkey fryer on a low setting and that's been with the lid off and it's been keeping it around between 145 and 155. I'm going to take the chicken, dunk it for about three seconds when it's in the water. Make sure you're getting down to the cankles. Vigorously shake it for three seconds. Pull it up. Do it again. I do it three times. And on the third time I pull it up, 
feathers still aren't coming out easy. I'm gonna put it back in. Starting to come out better, but not quite right yet. If you have the temperature right, you don't gotta worry about scolding the bird too much and getting, if you get the water too hot, the skin rips easily. Almost there, one more time. All right, there we go. Being just right, the feathers come out pretty easy. Still probably the longest process of the whole thing is getting all the feathers out and get doing a good job. So now if the water was too hot when you were dunking the bird, right now all the skin would be ripping. The feathers aren't coming out easy enough, either didn't dunk it long enough, or you got the water too cold. It's definitely worth waiting to get the temperature up to temp of the water. And if you got it too hot, add some cold water in and let it cool down. By no means am I a professional at this. I do it a couple of times a year if that, depending on if we have birds or not. So I guess the world record for plucking a chicken is 4.4 seconds by hand back in 1939. I wish I could pluck a chicken that fast and do a good job at it. Probably takes me 4.4 minutes at least to get all the feathers off. These ones right here are always the worst. If you guys have any tips or tricks on how to Get the feathers better or quicker, let me know. Like I said, by no means am I a professional at this. So, if there's a better way of doing it, I'm all ears and I'd love to hear it. I'm videotaping this myself, so if I don't get everything in frame for you guys, I apologize in advance. So, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the legs, I'm gonna pick the bird up, and I'm gonna stick my knife right here in the crack and just let the weight of the bird cut it, not having to worry about cutting the bone. Just keep bending and Then I go over and I slit up the right by the breast and the neck and I cut all the way down, grab the two main cords right here, kind of get it under them with your finger and free the free them up so you can pull them out the back side. Part can be kind of a pain but it's worth it to take the few extra seconds to get it done right. And I go ahead and I slit this area right below the breastbone. Cut the big nub off on both sides. Again, I go pick up the bird, let the weight of it find the crevice for the knife to go in so you're not cutting any bones and dulling your knife. Now I just get my hand in here, get your hand in the cavity, and just try to free up everything inside. Work your hand all around. <clears throat> if you get your hand in there and work it around the cavity like this inside, free up everything. Reach your two fingers up here the best you can. Hook it like this after. Here's your main vein from up top, from in the neck. And you can get everything in one handful pretty much. Go back in, clean it out. I don't know all the anatomy of the birds, that's why I'm not using the, the correct terminology. You don't need to know the terminology of the bird to process it. Then I just go ahead and I put my knife in the neck, the weight of the bird on the neck, go around.
then I cut off all the excess skin too. At this point I'll, I'll go back. Now I just go back and I check, make sure I got all the feathers. Some people do a lot fancier job cutting out the inside. They leave a flap of skin so you can cut, tuck, and tuck the legs in. I'm not that good yet, so I just go ahead and I don't worry about it. I do the best I can. I get everything out, cleaned up, get all the feathers off. Take the garden hose, clean out the cavity. So once the bird is all set, cleaned up, go ahead. I got a cooler full of ice cold water and a little bit of cider vinegar. Stick them in here to cool down. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you liked the video. I hope it helped you out. If it didn't, keep your comments to yourself. No, just joking. If you have any comments, suggestions, leave them down below in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Um, like I said, I'm not a professional at this. I just do it for our own personal meat. So it might not be the best way. It might not be the quickest way. If you know a better way, leave them in the comments. Help me learn. We can all grow together. So we'll see you right back here next time at Alumni Acres. Thanks for watching.